So my name is Roxana Delgado, and um, I grew up in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I worked at um, I work as a health scientist, and I'm also a military caregiver. My name is Victor Medina. I'm a retired sergeant first class, U.S. Army. Uh, I am. Uh, I grew up in Puerto Rico, and I am a certified re rehab uh, counselor. So Victor was wounded in June uh, 29, 2009, in an explosion, and he was uh, medevac to or medically evacuated um, to Lashtal Army Medical Center where he was there a couple weeks, um, like four or five weeks um, ongoing, a lot of different uh, tests, and he sustained a moderate brain injury. I became a caregiver the day that he touched ground here in the United States, although I didn't know um, or didn't recognize it until months later. Then when they discharge him, uh, there was all this list of things that we have to go through in terms of, you know, now his rehab is going to consist of all this. And at that time, I was in school, plus I was uh, working full time and just trying to find a way of um, managing all that at the same time. So that's how I became a caregiver, because Victor was wounded in Iraq and um, he was sent back home for mm -hmm. rehab. So. Victor and I had an amazing relationship before the um, injury. We met when I was only 19, he was 20, we were both in college. Um, Victor was very creative and very persistent <laughs> on how he wanted to um, start dating me and um, then he proposed, we dated for four years because we both wanted to have our, at least our bachelor's degree uh, before getting married and Victor was always that kind of husband that will make you feel like a princess. Through, through this pro process, I do re rec recognize that my, my wife could, could have le left, and she did, did, didn't. And she made, made a, cho a cho choice of stay, staying by, by, by my side. And I, I do re rec recognize that, and I do th thank her o often be because she cho chose to Stay, stay with, with me. She cho chose the hard, hard pa path. Uh, and so Sorry. I, I re re realized like, she, she, she was my, my career when she was there supporting me every, every, every step, step of the way. Not, not ba baby, babying me, me mm -hmm. but supporting me, me mm -hmm. in, in, into ma making str strides to he heal to imp improve. There, there's a, st I, I guess there's a, well, disabilities by, by itself bring a lot, there's a lot, lot of st stigma. Not, not from, from the per per persons uh, with the, the disability per perspective, but from the outsider, meaning emplo employer. But I did, I did, did everything that could, could be expected from a from a from a wounded vet. I did my, my full, full re, re, rehab, which was about three three years of re, rehab. I went back back to back to school, school got cert, cert, certified on some, some, something I can't handle, and still, still I can't I can't get get a, get a job job. So. Uh, I, I think, think for, for, for the one, one, one of that, great reintegrating and fi finding. And you'll, you'll know that what work, work is very mu much at, attached to fulfillment yeah. of success. Then we, we ask ourselves, uh, what, what, what about the depression? Well, to get to the depression, I saw, you get, I saw, first you get isolated. Like in my, my, my case, because I have an a angel uh, in my, my house. No. <laughs> uh, but she, she's work, 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 working uh, uh, in her, her UT office. I'm all day, all day, all day at home by, by, by myself. And I, I've see, see, seen it that I don't talk, talk to any, any, anyone. So talk, talking about iso isolation, my, my case, I'm blessed with having a 
uh, strong, strong faith, and I'm, it meant a lot, lot for, for my, my, my wife, but many, many, many pe pe people which, which in the, in, you can see, see, you can say, having a strong, strong faith and a strong ma ma marriage in, in two days, what world is a lot of luxury. Uh, but I, I tell, tell my, my, uh, my, my wife, the, the suicide rate is he, he's, what, he's going from about 20, 20, 22 to a day of the, those re re registered with the VA, which we don't know. There's many, many especially Vietnam vets, that ne never went, went to the VA. What, what, what about those? Saying this, this ability is not my identity. Mm -hmm. I, I'm my identity is I'm Victor Medina, U.S. Army retired, and a vocational counselor. That's who I, I, I am. I'm, I'm not not Victor Medina. The 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 impaired or the disabled. Because they mm -hmm. put that late, late, late. I'm not disabled. I have a disability, but I'm not disabled. And this this really is not the the identity of the, the person. Inside that per person, that that is so, something a lot, lot bit bigger than that disability they they see. I I, I was a very proud army wife. Um, later happened to be um, wounded. So what? We feel, ver we feel, you know, we feel pride about it. We don't, like Victor and I say it all the time, if we had to do this all over again, we'll do it all over again. Even if Victor, if the, even if someone comes, comes back and say, hey, Roxana, in the third deployment on this day, he's going to be wounded, then so be it. I mean, it has been a difficult journey, but it has been the most fulfilling journey we have ever experienced in our life. We had all our lives like plan out. We're like, okay, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. This was just a life detour. And we have taken it in such a way that we're like, we wanna find purpose in everything we do. I'm th thankful that depression or sadness didn't get rooted in, in, in me or, or, or Roxana, but I see that I'm not, not the no, norm, and that the no, no, norm is the to, total op, op, opposite. That, that's why it's very impo important edu education in the re rehab process in, into how, how roles are sh ch changed, how, how to re re really find uh, su success, uh, in, in, a, in a way that if, let's say, say an, a per person that's suffering amp amp amputation on the, on the legs, let, let's, they, they might want, want, want to run, but is that re really realistic? It has ha ha happened, but it's not, not the norm. No, no. So sh shift, shifting that, that per person from, hey, I, I know you want to be, be a runner, but what other things would you like, like, like to do? What other, other things may, may, make you ha happy? And through the re rehab pro process, like explo exploring th those er er areas and help helping that, that person to re redefine su success. Achieving su su success brings ha happy, happiness and ful fulfillment. I would reassess myself with a caregiver burden every three months. I would take the survey and um, yes, I went through a lot of, uh, for the first two or three years, a lot of sorrow. There was a sadness. There was um, even isolation. There were some moments where I felt like, even though I have beautiful people around me, I felt so lonely in the, in the road or the journey. But depression, I, I personally did not experience it. I attribute a lot into co constantly being um, reassessing. I started avoiding um, negative uh, news and negative thoughts and started reading a lot of inspirational books. Um, I started blogging. Victor and I started blogging, blogging back in um, 2010. Each one had our own blogs, so I think journaling helped tremendously. 
I think the feedback, having that people um, writing back, hey, I read your blog and I, I could relate to it. And it, at least in my case, it started giving me a new purpose too. It's, it's like when you find purpose, you start feeling, feeling like you're fulfilled. And it doesn't come easy. Like Victor said, we have to be constantly aware. It's, it's like going to the gym for the physical health or whatever. So it's a con constant emotional training um, to be able to not get there. And we feel fortunate because now we feel that others could look up and say, oh, it is achievable. I had an amazing support system, amazing. Um, I wish all caregivers were this fortunate. Um, and I think that's not far from reality. I think that if we have, if in society we're able to understand how much caregivers give from themselves and we're willing to walk that extra mile, we can make it happen. I finished school. I finished my PhD um, on time. I started in 2009 um, when Dieter was Medevac. Um, and I finished in 2013, so right on time. Um, again, with a lot of support, I was able to um, excel at work. Um, I had papers and um, published papers, published a book. I mean, why? Again, because I was given that support. I am no, no more special or more or smarter than anybody else. It's just that I was given that opportunity and that, that path to be able to be successful. We, um, or I try to always encourage um, people to support our caregivers because they're hard worker and they really want to make it work. They just need to be given that chance. I think we still have a long way to go in improving um, how we attend the needs of caregivers. There's now a national discussion, which is a nice thing. We are moving forward at a faster pace than I thought it was going to happen. Um, we're not there yet. I'm very confident that we're going to be there at some point in time before the next decade. <laughs>
support. So. Elizabeth Doll Foundation, they instituted something very interesting. They um, evaluate organizations that are serving military caregivers to ensure that they actually are impacting the needs that were uh, identified through the RAM report. They make sure that those um, organizations are legitimate and that are utilizing the funding and everything in a, in a good way. And they try to find organizations that are filling those gaps and bridging the gaps between um, services and for caregivers. So I would say um, one of the missions of the Elizabeth Dole is that they um, basically partner with national organizations and local organizations to make sure that they are meeting the needs of military caregivers. Um, when you help the caregiver, you're helping the veteran and all the way around too. So if you can do something as whatever organization you are or as a personal level that could um, empower, improve, motivate a family, then go for it, please. So um, we have a website, ElizabethDoleFoundation.org, the HeatingHeroesCampaign.org, um, and definitely if you Google Elizabeth Dole Foundation, um, it will come up so many things about what the, um, or the, the foundation is doing. Um, one thing that I want to mention, it's about Senator Dole. So Senator Elizabeth Dole, um, she is... And we always get emotional, even the fellows, when we talk about her, because what she has done is giving us a voice. She saw the struggles. And when we talk about communities, you know, when they see, she saw the struggle, she saw the need. And she didn't go back home with, in her comfort zone to say, oh, because I'm caring for Bob, I don't have time for this. She utilized her resources, on top of being a caregiver herself, to say, I want to support this community. I want to make sure that not only they have a voice, but we start working on resources, and we start doing something that will impact policy. Why? Because she wants to make this sustainable. She wants to make sure that not only the foundation does something for today, but does something for all the future wars and all the future caregivers. So um, she is amazing. She, we call her our, our hero <laughs> um, and our angel. And she, Cyril Dole is, is just a true, um, she, she's so amazing that I don't even have words to describe her. So, um, so when people, and I encourage everyone to go to um, Elizabeth Dole Foundation, and when they get to see that, uh, what it's all about, I encourage everyone to go first and see how this initiative was born, because it was born out of love and empowerment and, and, and deep care, truly care for our military caregivers. And I personally, that I know her, I can attest to that. She is an amazing woman.